Welcome to Why Is This Good, a podcast by the Naples Writers Workshop. I'm Christine, and I'm here with Rob and John. Hey, guys. Hey. Hello. And this week, it's Rob's turn. So, Rob, tell us what you picked. This is Goodbye and Good Luck by Grace Paley, published in 1959. I'm just going to start from the top and read a few paragraphs. I was popular in certain circles, says Aunt Rose. I wasn't no thinner then, only more stationary in the flesh. In time to come, Lily, don't be surprised. Change is a fact of God. From this, no one is excused. Only a person like your mama stands on one foot. She don't notice how bigger behind is getting and sings in the canary's ear for 30 years. Who's listening? Papa's in the shop. You and Seymour are thinking about yourself. So she waits in a spotless kitchen for a kind word and thinks... Poor Rosie. Poor Rosie. If there was more life in my little sister, she would know my heart is a regular college of feelings, and there is such information between my course and me that her whole married life is a kindergarten. Nowadays, you could find me any time in a hotel, uptown or downtown. Who needs an apartment to live like a maid with a dust rag in the hand, sneezing? I'm in very good with the busboys. It's more interesting than home. All kinds of people. Everybody with a reason. And my reason, Lily, is a long time ago I said to the forelady, Mrs., if I can't sit by the window, I can't sit. If you can't sit, girly, she says politely, go stand on the street corner. And that's how I got unemployed in novelty wear. And that's the first page. This is a really fun, I would say almost sticky, almost vaudevillian, weird little gem of a short story. Um, I've read one other very short piece by Grace Paley, and she's pretty singular. I don't know how else to describe her. She's strange, kind of not erudite, but abstract. I know she wrote a lot of poetry. There is a plot here. Uh, this isn't, uh, um, I think you can discern that. There's a, uh, Aunt Rose is in her 50s. She's past her prime, but she is not, I don't, I don't think she's one to believe in primes necessarily. And she's explaining to her niece, Lily, just, it's not a birds and the bees conversations, but it, it seems like it's more of a story about, it, it's about women aging. And and there's different ways to deal with it. And I think Aunt Rose has picked maybe one of the best ways to deal with it by just kind of throwing caution to the wind and being herself 100%. I loved Aunt Rose. I fell I fell in love with Aunt Rose probably. But the first, I was popular in certain circles is it's self-deprecating. It's funny. And it just kind of keeps expanding on that. And she gets into her decades. It sounds like a decades long fling with a unpronounceable actor. Who, who's, <laughs> I was just looking at the name like, ooh. And he's a, he, yeah, he's a piece of work. And a fun, he's a great foil for her. I, I would definitely recommend this just because it's so strange and it seems very regional. This is absolutely a Jewish New York story of mid-century and it's a ton. There's so much personality and fun and a lot of it does read like poetry. Um, so for you poets out there or people who just like kind of like lyrical, fun, quirky prose, this is a, it's a great choice. So I'll hand it over to you guys and let's hear what you think. I realized when I finished reading this that um, this is one of those very elusive short stories that I would describe as having a happy ending. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. And I think that's why it's easy to call it fun <laughs> because it gives you a lot to think about, but it also kind of satisfies you at the end with what you want to see for Aunt Rose, which is that she gets to end up with her fling. He basically comes crawling back. He says, hey, I'm single. What do you think? And she's like, all right. Yeah. She's the opposite of the woman in the last story that we read who won't admit what she wants, but also doesn't really know. She's a seasoned lady. She's had her fun and she hasn't, she's been able to do that because she she hasn't been bound by what society thinks a woman should do in this day and age when it's written. So she's just done her own thing and she's lived a really full life because of it. And so yeah, it's a happy ending. And I, I realized that that's what I really liked about this. It was a happy ending, but that didn't mean it was simple. It was probably the opposite. It still had a plot, like Rob said. And then I did this fun thing, of course, with the point of view and the way it's written. It's like directed toward a, a listener who happens to be a character. You know, it's not directed to the reader. So she She's like giving life advice, but it was still satisfying to read. I don't, I don't know how else to describe it except that it was a happy story. I was like, good for this lady. It was very happy. She had like so much spunk and like it, there wasn't necessarily tragedy. It was just, this is what happened in my life. This didn't go this way. This didn't go this way. This went this way. This happened next. And she just kind of went with the flow for a while, but was having fun. And then at the end, like I said, she gets what, what you hope she got. And her happiness is so appealing and so attractive and so sexy. You can see why all she has... She she rattles off all of these suitors and she doesn't uh, you get the feeling that she's not traditionally attractive not necessarily because of her body but because of how she kind of describes herself like I'm nothing special but these guys are coming out of the woodwork for her and you can see why it's just because she does not care she's yeah. just so she's so cool with being herself and yeah this is this is coming out of the 50s like are you kidding me this has no place in the 1950s this is so fun and cool and yeah it's, it's a really like it's a sexy story with like zero sex if that makes yeah, sense right. to you guys yes, yeah. well you can tell she's got an appeal like you mm -hmm. said she and she doesn't have to say it she even starts out in this 
like we said, self-deprecating way of describing herself. And then she talks about like, she's got a fat butt. Like, yeah. what? <laughs> but then she goes on to say like, yeah, casually, all oh, these guys are interested in me. And and what I like, I guess, about that when Rab was saying it, like it's sexy, for me, it was because she didn't question it. She wasn't confused by it. She was like, yeah, of course. like, Of course everyone wants me. Yeah. yeah, not because she's bragging, but she's like, we're having fun. We're both having fun. This is mutual. Nobody necessarily like is after something. It's just the definition of doing what you want to do. So she doesn't even, like, I think at one point she turns down the suitor, right? He kind of says, yeah, I got a wife and a kid. And she's like, what? Yeah, she's pissed. Yeah. She's as pissed as she gets, which isn't much. No, she just kind of says, okay, well, this is it then. And he, and he respects it, which is interesting. And they just kind of move on. And that's why it's so nice when he comes back around and he kind of learns something from her, right? She put her foot down. And so he knows that's off limits. And then when he ends up getting a divorce, he calls her right back up and he's like, let's pick up where we left off. And she says, okay, that's fair. Like, you feel like she's a woman in power, like of her own story, even if it's winding and she doesn't necessarily have like a set direction. She's just such an interesting character that way. Yeah. And I think that where you left off in the beginning here just sets that tone for every everything that happens happens after it's like if you can't sit girly she says politely go stand on the street corner and that's how i got unemployed in novelty where she's <laughs> yeah. she's showing us right away that she's not going to take any crap she's just going to do what she wants to do she's she's in charge of herself and th- this really is an empowering yeah it's obviously an empowering tale for women particularly i love the part where we're in the play we're we're at the play the first time and she's seeing her um or she, she's seeing her fling for the first time on stage and all of these girls are cat calling him and it's so funny in the, the way that the narrator, the way Aunt Rose sets it up is, you know, she doesn't know if uh, all these women's husbands are working late or if maybe they're on leave or something, but they're all there and they're just living it up for this guy. It's like they're at a Chippendales or something. And it's just, <laughs> Gross. it's so much fun. And it's so cool just to, um, to see a, a feminist story that's just kind of so against the grain. It's a feminist story that's about like having fun. You don't see that a lot. I mean, <laughs> do you know what I mean? I mean, this is such a fun story and it's just kind of, it kind of exceeds just b- boy girl stuff or just like, yeah, just kind of own who you are and have fun and it's gonna end so goodbye and good luck I think that's kind of the same it's like it's right. you're gonna wrap it up the goodbye and good luck sort of struck me as um it reminded me of uh, Slaughterhouse 5 where the narrator he, whatever he mentions death he, he says and so it goes and that's just kind yeah. of a, a, co- a comment on death is everywhere and then so it goes and goodbye and good luck kind of struck me as the same thing it's like it's all gonna end so like good luck you know, just take what you got and have fun yeah she's just an interesting character for her time because like we said she, she like didn't have an agenda so many women these days would have been disappointed in themselves for not being married or settled down and this is a woman for whom going against the grain ended up rewarding herself she, she was more mightily rewarded than her mm-hmm. counterparts right she wasn't like her fling's wife who settled with a guy she wanted to settle with and then gets cheated on for her entire marriage yeah. she won out it's like a I don't know there's like a lesson I guess <laughs> but that, that's yeah, not there's absolutely a lesson <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. and it's fun to see you get these small moments where Lily who never makes an appearance aside just from her name you can tell that Lily's shocked at a lot of this oh sure yeah, yeah. and if Lily's probably I'm gonna guess if she's telling her these stories maybe she's I don't know late teens yeah and if she can't believe what's happening 40 years ago from her aunt we get the idea that Aunt Rose is way ahead of her she's still ahead of her time in a lot of ways so like the way we're describing this is like a happy story and like oh what a fun character I, I think it there's like Rob said it reads like poetry and and that's the joy of this story. This is not a straightforward story. Like, listen up, little girl. Let me tell you about how to live your life. And here's the payoff. When I was reading it, I wasn't necessarily waiting for a plot. You know, I didn't even know that it was going to kind of wrap around or have an ending. But this narrator, this character is such a huge personality that you'll just go along for this almost stream of consciousness description of the high points of her life. So she, like you said, she, she describes th- that, like that first scene is her meeting her fling for the first time when he's on stage so you spend a lot of time in that theater and then you spend a lot of time with like her having a drink with him afterwards and then you kind of like zip over the years and decades and then you kind of realize at some point halfway through the story maybe that it's going to be a story about this fling yeah 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 that's that's yeah it was really uh that was a cool twist like oh this is i guess it's just about this guy yeah because you you really think it's going to be i don't know that it's going to end a different way but i would have read 
at anything. She like once you finally got into it, this character was just such a strong character. Yeah, I was a little bummed when it ended. It's a short story. This is a ten page of max. Mm-hmm. I think it's probably worth the like reading a couple of the lines, but like Yeah, I was just thinking that. Here's one one instance that I liked. Uh we made for him a great dinner of honor and we're talking about the actor here that she she's with. At this dinner I said to him for the last time, I thought, Goodbye, dear friend, topic of my life, now we part. Topic of my life, like <laughs> gave me pause, like God, that's beautiful. Uh-huh. Just to, to think of your partner as kind of like the main subject and the occasion of your life and, and that's obviously the, the clue that Christine and I missed is this is the topic of the story yeah right because right. at that point it was kind of winding mm-hmm. I like this section too like she's this is after they kind of parted ways when she finds out that he's got a wife it says after this few days I came back to my life when we met me and Vlashkin we only said hello and goodbye and then for a few sad years with the head we nodded as if to say yes yes I know who you are but what a great way to describe intervening years yeah. she's describing yeah, yeah. years and you're getting more than if she were to give us the breakdown and it's because like Rob said this is written like poetry. I, I marked a couple of paragraphs before that at the uh-huh. end she's talking about his wife poor woman she did not know I was on the same stage with her. The poison I was to her role she did not know. Great, great metaphor for this whole theater thing. Yeah. I think not to jump to the takeaway but I guess I'll just give mine prematurely is that you don't have to let like plot be the driver of the story. I, I think we're kind of conditioned to do that and it's really unfortunate. Sometimes just beautiful language and focus beautiful language. I mean this isn't there, this this is a really, really focused story. I think we might be intimating that it's a little loosey-goosey. It felt airtight to me. Um, everything felt right where it was supposed to be. But I think if you're concerned with using kind of florid lyrical language to carry your story, I think it can be done. And I think you should do it 100% because there's, there's not enough people like this in the mainstream. And it's so much fun to read. It's so much different. Yeah, that's the thing. That's the biggest takeaway from this is, yeah, it's a cool story. But the way it's written is what makes it fun to read. This is another cool little paragraph that I thought was like almost kind of annoying poetry but then she pulled back and it was funny so it says so the story creeps to an end i love that one and then she says i noticed it first on my mother's face the rotten handwriting of time scribbled up and down her cheeks across her forehead back and forth a child could read it said old 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 but it troubled my heart most to see these realities scratched on blashkin's wonderful expression so when she's describing age as being handwritten i was like that's kind of mm-hmm. when she says old 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 and it's like okay she's still being funny she's like aware of even the way that she's talking to Lily about these things. And and the whole thing too is um, she's describing Blashkin not in a condescending way or even an angry or mean way. She's just like, this was him and this is what he did. And yeah, he had a wife and she even tells Lily at some point, oh, don't be surprised that that happens. Uh, but don't worry about it. Treating another character in a story that way is always interesting too. Like she just felt like she had the upper hand as a character the whole yeah, time. Yeah, I think that's because she's 100% accepting of herself. Oh, Dublin. So it's just a story about how Flashkin like comes around and she gets what she wanted because she was patient. That's right. Yeah, I love it. It was so much fun. Which is a very kind of unfeminist way. I would think to look yeah. at it. You shouldn't be wanting that. And I don't. I think she would have been fine either way. She was going to be fine without him. Right. She was fine without him. Yeah, that was the kind of the point because there's that moment when he calls up and he's like, "Is this Rosie?" And she's like, "Yeah." He's like, "What do you think? I'm single now. Can we have a drink?" And there's a line if I can find it where she like kind of thinks about it, but then she doesn't pretend to think about it. She's like, "Yeah." Yeah, come on up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's very, very matter of fact. And the way that's introduced is last week, washing my underwear in the basin. <laughs> yeah. I get a buzz. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of this stuff feels like set up punchline, set up punchline, which is so much fun. It's such a strange way to do it with like a poetic format. Yeah, this is a this is a cool artist at work. And some weird kind of abstract stuff. The same pictures on the wall, Olive Lashkin, only now everything painted red and black, which was stylish and new upholstery. Like that's it's kind of a striking image. The sense right before this, they're going into her apartment, right? We went instead full of interest, but not with our former speed up to my new place on 94th mm-hmm. Street. They're like, yeah, let's fuck. <laughs> this is the part where like Flashkin is basically asking her out for what's going to be the current relationship and he says first could I ask you to dinner in the theater uptown of course after this we are old friends I have money to burn what your heart desires others are like grass the north wind of time has cut out their heart of you Rosie I recreate only kindness what a woman should be to a man you were to me do you think Rosie a couple of old pals like us could have a few good times among the material things of this world which sounds great right he's like let's blow money and fuck I'm down (laughs) and 
Then Rosie says, my answer, Lily, in a minute was together. Yes, yes, come up, I said. Ask the room by the switchboard. Let us talk. So I'm remembering it a little differently, but I just like how she didn't pretend that she was going to play hard to get or anything. She's like, yeah, that sounds good. If you think about the story in like classic problem, complication, resolution format or something like that. I mean, the problem is they want to be together. The conflict is he has a wife. (laughs) And then the resolution is he gets divorced. It's... it's (laughs) It's, it's so simple, but it's, uh, I don't, that's why I feel like I'm doing it a disservice when I say, like, oh, what a simple, happy story. But Aunt yeah, Rose yeah. would appreciate that, though. Yeah. She'd be like, well, of course right. it's simple. Yeah, of course it's happy. Right. Mm-hmm. I got what I wanted. So what would you guys take away? I feel like we didn't have to discuss this at length because it just does what it does it's so well. To discuss, yeah, it's tough it's to discuss. Yeah, it's hard to break down how she did it. Yeah, it's sort of, you're trying to break down, like, particular colors and moods and stuff when you get into kind of writing like this, where it's kind of so particular and singular and, and strange. I think what it is. I, mean, I think what we're, we're kind of circling around is the story is, I guess portrait might be the right word, although mm-hmm. because it's it's not quite a portrait. Portrait of an attitude. Of an attitude, yeah. Uh, but it's it's about uh, Rose, right? Aunt Rose. It's interesting that uh, the first line says, has, says Aunt Rose in it. It's the only kind of third person That was place weird. I didn't notice that until we started again today, but yeah. But overall, everything that's in the story is out of her mouth. So I think the, the driving force behind it is her voice. Oh, absolutely. Right? That, yeah. And it's not merely her, I mean, it is her voice, but it's also the occasion in which she's speaking. She's talking to Lily and the way she's reacting to, you know, we, we get the offstage stuff, like little moments where she's reacting to something that Lily says right. or does, um, where she says something. Uh, she basically oh, yeah. says like, calm down or, yeah. oh, that's common. In memory of him and out of respect for mankind, I decided to live for love. Don't laugh, you ignorant girl. <laughs> Do you think it was easy for me? Uh, yeah, stuff like that. It gives us a sense of the, the the occasion and what's... So even though she's telling us the story of this, like we said, kind of simple, straight, linear, uh, not quite linear, but relatively linear um, progression of their relationship, she, the, 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 the thrust of the story, the interest of the story is, is in the way she's talking to Lily and the way she's unfolding it. And that's where all the poetry comes in. That's why the voice gets to be so strong is because that's what motivating us yeah. which is some um, right. I think that's something that, you know we can definitely take away from it yeah like a, a seasoned character giving advice mm-hmm. versus telling the story of their life yeah I mean the thing I wrote down for my takeaway was uh, was that is thinking about the if in a first person story is thinking about the occasion of the telling and having that occasion inform the way it's told all these little she keeps addressing Lily over and over again just reminding us this is my impen- independence Lily dear and um, a couple pages later. Nowadays, I suppose it's easier, Lily. My goodness, I ain't asking you nothing. Touchy, touchy. And so we keep getting introduced to Lily over and over. Not introduced, but um, reminded that she's talking to Lily. Even, you know, those she has long sections. Well, long is relative, but extended sections where she's just describing events from the past and giving us dial- back and forth dialogue between her and Vlashkin and then interlarding into those things uh, her reactions and discussions with Lily and kind of commentary on the on the background. Color is his middle name, says Vlashkin, always to the point. I put this in to show you your fat old aunt was not <laughs> crazy out of loneliness. In those noisy years, I had friends among interesting people who admired me for reasons of youth and that I was a first class listener. So it's, um, she's also commenting on her story as she's telling it. I, I said my, my takeaway is thinking about the occasion of telling and I'm reminded of uh, the epics Homer with the um, the Iliad the Odyssey it always begins with the rhapsodist invoking the muses and he says speak through me muses and you you know at least when I read the the, the epics I, I see the rhapsodist standing there in, in Greece like talking whereas this one you see her sitting or some I, I picture them sitting at a table kind of like she's not quite looking at Lily and just kind of talking to her and Lily's sitting there all proper mm-hmm. yeah. you know, hands folded needs to get uh, Rose is more sprawled. I mean, this is all invented in my head, but that's what I'm getting is the sense yeah. of the occasion of of the telling. I love the scene um, where we fir- where we see it's early in the story and Rosie is trying to get the first job and she meets Mr. Krimberg and he's being kind of a gross Weinstein type. <laughs> and she handles it with um, class and she takes the high road by totally re- reducing his advances and yeah. and she she kind of address he said he makes an advance at her and she kind of sets up what she's going to say by saying everybody likes kindness I said to him only don't be fresh and we'll make a good bargain so it's like alright let's get past all the stupid ste- your gross sex yeah. stuff right now let's get to the money part so it's and that's like 
I'm taking control. I'm going to be the guy here. Yeah. Let's get down to the bottom line. It, it was great to see that she's just great at diffusing the situations like that. Yeah, mm-hmm. She's just an easy person to root for. And everybody likes kindness. I mean, if we're looking for a lesson, I think we're, we're seeing one right there. And even though that sounds like, you know, a platitude or something silly, it's that's really major. Right. You're just seeing someone who's happy and, and doing their thing. I love it. Well, I guess like compared to the last two stories that we read for the session, so gender studies where she doesn't have sex with the Trump supporter, but she wanted to. And then the Lady Tigers where we kind of end before we really see how the story pans out. We know that he's going to get help. He's going to leave the crash, but we don't really see him dealing with the aftermath. I guess my takeaway would be this is an example of a story with an ending that you wanted to see and it was still satisfying not necessarily because of the ending that was like a bonus right that was like the icing that we got to see her happy and married to a guy that the lesson of the story was like she pined for but not too much she still had fun and it was successful that way because this was such a strong character right like you can you can have a happy story that doesn't feel simple and boring almost if the added layer is this really complex character that jumps off the page and that's that's, that's hard to do to make a great yeah. voice like that it's I mean, definitely not easy no, I wouldn't try this at home. But, yeah. <laughs> Stick to what you can do. Happy well, stories are not easy. A story I shared in the workshop that I, I'm taking lessons from this. So I'm going to rewrite oh, cool. it. Yeah, it's the first person with a strong voice. I don't know if it's strong, but I'm going to try to yeah. try to work on it. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned, everybody. But I, I, some of the feedback I get was about the occasion. Like, okay. like I, so you guys read it, but um, okay. you know, it was about the alien, and yeah. um, people were wondering oh. why is he telling the story, and I was like, you know, that's I could I could use what she's doing in or in this story to kind of inform how that story is told. Right. Yeah. It kind of goes back to what Rob was saying about like this being um like a portrait of an attitude, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Like this is not like we're learning about the whole character, but it, to think about it as almost like a character. Um, sketch oh yeah is really mm-hmm. interesting yeah because like yes there's a story within a story but then it allows you to have the character just it, this is basically um stream of consciousness i mean it's just she's telling a story but she doesn't have to be telling a story for us to get the, the portrait true, true. of the attitude it doesn't have to start and end it doesn't have to have hard lessons we're enjoying it for her voice stream of consciousness from someone who just won't stop talking <laughs> yeah she's well, like oh and, lily and it shows you the strength of character because if this is a character stretch and it, it's character sketch and it is a story then I think it, it demonstrates that all you really need is an awesome. If you have one awesome character in a story, right. that's enough gas in the tank. We had to um, do. I remember in one of my like early fiction classes, and then in like a later fiction class, a character sketch. And the first time it was invent a character or you know whatever. Those are really fun because it's a challenge to write maybe something like 250 words or 500 words of a character sketch where you know that the point is not to tell a story, but it's to tell a story of the character. So like, there's not a beginning, middle, and end, but there has to be like something that like wraps it up and like it's just an interesting um, exercise to write just what is described as a character sketch and to make it really short. Mm-hmm. I mentioned um, a couple episodes ago about that exercise of writing, trying to get into your character's head by writing something from their point of view. Uh, you know, this could have been one of those exercises that became its own really cool right. story. Stood on its own. N- no wasted effort. No, no, no that's wasted for effort. sure. Isn't it? Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Good night.